Well, 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 we back, we back, we back. Live and in effect. <laughs> the end of a, another day. This is very unusual because I normally don't get to talk uh, to my audience two times in a day. Because frankly, I'm too tired. I could I couldn't I couldn't talk if I wanted to. I'm just I'm just too tired. I just have to <laughs> I just have to admit that. I'm just I'm just too tired. Uh had a nice talk with us this morning. I appreciate it. And uh getting ready to call it a night. So I hope that your day, considering that we live in a racist society, considering that we live under the domination of what Tariq Nasheed says, white supremacy, what uh, uh, Robert Perkins say, white supremacy, what uh, Cynthia G said, white supremacy, considering we were living under white supremacy, I hope that your day has been as good as it can be. Because, again, rest in peace, that brother, Nipsey Hussle, I believe that it is. I'm not, I'm not familiar with uh, these uh, modern day rappers. I don't know who they are. All I know is he's a brother that should not have been murdered the way he was gunned down in a neighborhood that he was proud, in a neighborhood where he was trying to cause a positive change and do good things, we all should mourn for the loss of anybody that tried to do any type of good for the so-called Negro in America, the descendants of slaves, having dark skin, having African or Aboriginal ancestry, we should, we should feel some kind of um, great loss. However, as I told us this morning, that's all we do is we die and we cry. That's all we do. And if it's not the peck of woods that's murdering us, we are murdering ourselves. There is no real consequence to anybody, regardless of race, when they murder us. So we're easy victims. We're easy pickings and we won't do anything really about it except die and cry. There was a, I believe it was a, yeah, shout out to my brother Dope Coke One. His video started off with a rap from the last poets called Die Nigga Die. We love it. We die all kinds of ways. We just die. It seems like we love to die. And that was made, I believe, during the 1960s. And here it is in 2019. Die, nigga, die. We just love to die. Die in the bathroom. Die in the tavern. Die on the street. Die in an airplane. As long as we die. Die, nigga, die. Die, die. That's all we do. And cry. And then we shed tears and we have these memorials and we have these vigils and we light candles and we cry. And then before, then before we get over that one, somebody else die. Die and cry. That's a, that's a current theme among the so-called Negro. Dying and crying. You would think we would get sick of it, but clearly we're not. You could be next. You, right there. You could be next. I could be next. Matter of fact, quite honestly, I've had a few close calls myself. It could happen to us at any time. I mean, death is going to come to us. Regardless. But the way we die. Die in the bathroom. Die in the garage. Die on the street by a fire hydrant. Die, nigga, die. Die getting drunk. Die as a prostitute. Die as a pimp. 
just die. We love, we just dying, 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 crying. And what do our leaders do? They hype up your emotion. And then they tell you, go in your pockets. I know you're getting ready to die anyway, so you don't need that money. Donate to my Patreon account. Donate to my cash app. You getting ready to die anyway. Die, nigga, die. Leave me your money. You can go ahead and die. All of our so-called leaders, rich, while the, while the people themselves remain in a horrid condition. So you have the mindset of this man that murdered Nipsey Hussle. Since nobody, there is no real attempt to heal the condition. All our leaders want their face all over Facebook and CNN and Fox. And give me your money. Because again, you getting ready to die anyway. Die, nigga, die. You don't need that money. Donate to my Patreon. To my cash app. Send me a check. Or money order. I thought you're supposed to be leading us. I am. I want to lead you straight to your bank. Where's the check? When I have a live chat, donate the two dollars and three dollars. It all adds up. So when they die, they die rich. And the neighborhood dies poor. So somebody that, that cared, somebody that saw value in the people and wanted better in the people just gunned down for nothing. And he wasn't the first and he won't be the last die, nigga, die. That's a current theme, a, a ever occurring theme among us. Jealousy and envy. You don't have nothing. So you don't want nobody else to have nothing. You know, I was just thinking about that. I was just thinking about that in, in this Mississippi campaign. I was just thinking, is it really that a whole lot of these folks, is it really that they have a problem with the Mississippi campaign? Or is it really that they jealous and they envious and they wish that that idea or that concept came from them. It's hard to say among the Negro. Die, nigga, die. So if I die, I wouldn't be shocked. Somebody else will come and take it and change it around a little bit because they don't want to give Angel Snub Number 7 credit because Angel Snub Number 7 really is too damn dumb. How can something good like that come from this Negro? For years and years and years, I know that there's something wrong with what we're doing, but quite honestly, I myself didn't know what to do. What's your solution? I didn't have none, but I know something wrong with the stuff that we're doing now. I knew that, but now I feel so good. I feel so confident. And, I, and peace to you, peace to the chat room. Um, I feel so confident and good now. So when they come to me and they say, well, what's your solution? Now I can say, Operation Exodus Mississippi. Examine it, check it out. And once they examine and check it out, I don't hear nothing from no, I don't hear nothing from them no more. I really haven't seen, I really haven't seen nobody really present something to knock the Mississippi campaign. And it goes back again. Jealousy and envy. That's what it's about. It's jealousy and envy, y'all. That's why Nipsey Hussle, primarily that's why he's dead. Because you had a fool that have not accomplished and don't want to do nothing with his life 
take the life of this, this man who might have helped him. He might have helped him. I heard that they knew each other. So this was a personal vendetta. But it don't mean nothing. Because people with good hearts still might change their mind and help you. Even though you done me dirty. Even though you done me evil. When people have good hearts, it's hard to turn people away. Because you want to help everybody. You just have a kind heart. But we'll never know. Because we had we had a good person taken away. So uh I thank you for joining me this morning. Like I said, I, I normally don't have a chance to talk to us twice <laughs> in a day. But uh on this very special occasion. Before I call it a night, I want to just talk to you about a, a white guy. Well, you know, we say pink on this forum. You know, pink guy. Or Caucasian. I don't like saying white. And I will say, I, and for those who are new to the channel, I'm going to tell you. Now, there's nothing wrong with pink. You disrespectful. That's racist calling white people pink. No, it's disrespectful and it's racist. When you put everybody in these categories, white, black, brown, red, yellow, in these racial categories, and then you made the lighter, the lightest of the races, you make them superior. That's what's racist. Matter of fact, if it was not for that, there would be no need for me to say or talk about pink people. But if you can name somebody and label people, because I did not ask to be called black. You put this on us, white folks. I did not ask to be black. You labeled us. So you name me without my permission. So why can't I name you? Now you done it without my permission with the evil intent to make me an inferior to justify your evil action against dark skinned people. That's the reason why you done it. Because that black skin and then you put your religion into the mix because that black skin is a curse. And scientifically those with black skin have a lower IQ, that of an animal and have no soul. Now when I said pink pink does not relate to none of that. I call you pink Nothing happens to you. You are not inferior. You are not treated badly. Nothing happens to you. You're more, but when you talk about colors, you are more pink than white. Well, this, this is gray looking, but it's, this is more white than you are. You look more reddish. You are not white. White in the English language means honorable. It can mean kosher, righteous, honesty, pure. You are none of these things. You know it and I know it. <laughs> so I'm not going to call you white. Matter of fact, besides white people, whoever called you white? Nobody. The Native Americans here, for, you know, according to the movies, called you pay, pale face. Kutakente called you the tuba. Who called you white except you? And since you control the media, you control books and learning, science and history. You put, you put it in the in that media. Call me the white man. Nobody was calling you no white man. And I'm not going to call you a white man. Now, you made up the word Caucasian, and you also, in the English language, uh, 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 I assume you, you created the word pink too. So what you mad at? If you can label people and call them something, why can't I? 
except I don't have evil intent. I'm not going to let you call you black. I'm not going to call you cursed. I'm not going to do that with you. But you've done that to us and others all over the earth. Hold on a second here. Don't blame me. All I do and any, any dark-skinned person does is respond and react to what has been done to them. <laughs> That's right, Syrian. That's right. If it's good, Syrian said, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Show sure enough. <laughs> Show sure enough. And that's my Christian friend. I like Syrian. Don't you know that we have more in common brothers and sisters than we have differences? Y'all need to stop tripping. We have more in common than we do differences. Y'all trip and talk about, well, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Muslim. We already know what we disagree on. Rally around what we agree upon and work from there. I already know what you don't like. You make that clear. I don't like this. I don't like that. Oh, you make it very clear what you don't like, what you hate. But clearly what you love is to continue to live with these races in this oppression. Clearly you love that. We know what you hate. <laughs> LOL, Syria. <laughs> so I'm not into that. Let's work on what we can agree upon. I'm not, I already know what you hate, what you dislike. But before it gets too late, before it gets too dark, well, it don't make no difference. I, I turn on my little light light. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to report to you about a little conversation I had. I'm going to say just, just, you know, just for, I guess, to, uh, okay, I'm just going to say white. Okay, I'm just going to say white. Pink guy, Caucasian guy. Uh, I'm not gonna say white on my channel. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> April Fool. <laughs> All right, but uh, look, I met a Caucasian guy, and uh, we actually had a decent conversation. He would be considered one of the good white people. Okay. Now let me see. If I can remember, let me give you a little bit of background of this guy, this gentleman, this gentleman. And I want to say again, we had a decent conversation. <clears throat> um, he's a Trump supporter. Okay. He loves Donald Trump. Donald Trump is really, really doing good in his eyes. He's, he's, Donald Trump is not a racist or none of that stuff. He loves Donald Trump. Um, he likes Clarence Thomas. You know, that Supreme Court judge. He likes, I'm just giving you some background to give you an idea of how this guy thinks. Um, he says, forget about slavery. We need to leave all that stuff behind and let's start from the now. Okay? Um, he's a hard worker. He makes about he makes about over a hundred thousand dollars a year. He's doing pretty good, but his family background is poor. He is a uh, he is the I don't know what generation it is, but he's the son of Irish immigrants that came over here on a boat. Okay, um, you should work hard. You should work hard and get what you. You earn all that type of mentality, blah, blah, blah. He does not support reparations. He's not into that. You never was a slave. You need to. Uh... Now, during our conversation, he was very respectful. He was very, very careful in how he talked to me. He was. You know, 
he 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 referred to me as black. He don't like uh, the word. He don't like the title African American. He said y'all black people. <laughs> he when he talked to me, he said y'all should have done this and y'all should have done. That. I said, sir, I don't control y'all. <laughs> I don't control the neighborhood. So I don't know what you mean by y'all should do this and y'all should do that. In that case, you know, it's a whole lot of y'all. You should have told y'all, y'all ancestors, well, not particularly him, but actually the Irish did join in. They joined in the exploitation of white, uh, black people, as you know. Later on, when uh, they became white, because, you know, I think Germans, and Irish, a lot of those people was not considered white. So they they saw that the Irish and some of these Caucasian immigrants was getting too close to the slaves and they did not want them to team up. They did not want them to create an alliance. So they gave the Irish and some of these other uh, Caucasian immigrants, as you know, you know, they gave them special privileges, gave them land, and broke broke them off and they turned on the slaves which would eventually become slavery would eventually become uh, of course all dark-skinned people they stopped giving dark-skinned people indentured servitude there were dark-skinned people who were indentured servants but then they en they enacted that all dark-skinned people just slaves period so you would have our ancestors had no chance of being free people. You was a slave when you're born. You're going to be a slave till you die. So that's a little of the background with this, this, this uh, Caucasian guy. And he considers himself a good white man. A good Caucasian fellow. Gentleman, sir. <laughs> Trying to be respectful here. Um, well, don't call him pink. Just call him the way I get out of here. Right? You don't tell me what to. You don't tell me what to do on my channel. Now I'm trying to be nice, <laughs> cause I don't have to be nice. 400 years of my ancestors suffering, even in my own personal life, with these crackers done to me. I don't have to be nice. So don't get it twisted. I'm trying to be nice. Cause I'm a good guy anyway. But don't try, don't, don't take it too far now. Cause I don't have to be nice. You ain't did a damn thing to deserve being nice. So consider yourself lucky. Don't come here. See, that's another thing. During our conversation with this, this, uh, this good, good Caucasian old, old boy. He's a good old boy country boy now he's talking to me and of course the conversation begins to get a little heated and this is what I, I this is what really gets me about talking to Caucasian people a lot of them they talk to us they talk to us like we are their slaves like look boy I'm telling you this take my advice and shut up Basically, that's the type of attitude that I get when you talk to some of these Caucasian people. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my cool because, really, I'm getting ready to go off. Because who the hell are you talking to? I'm not your damn slave. He telling me what I should, what I should listen to and how I should think. You're not my damn massa. And see, when some of you Caucasian people talking to dark-skinned folks, the way that your attitude and the way you talk to us, you act like I'm your slave. I'm not your damn slave. This is not, matter of fact, me personally, it's a big chance I would never have been your slave anyway because you would have been forced to kill me. That's just the bottom line. You would have had to kill me. Because I just can't take it. There's only so much I can take. I'm trying to be nice and respectful to you. 
Don't think I'm your damn boy. I'm your slave. You know, he likes people, like I told you, like uh, Colin, Colin Powell, uh, that, that judge, Clarence Thomas. See, those type of Negroes. So that gives you an idea. He thinks that I'm, he wants me to be like them. It ain't happening. And when he said he did not support reparations, you got a problem. Oh, just, just forget about that. Why you want to forget about that? The conversation was getting a little bit heated. But check this out. This is what I told him. I said, uh, the conversation getting a little bit heated here. But see, I told him that's the reason why we need separation. Now, then all of a sudden, he want to change his tune when I talk about separation. Why you want to do all that? We all Americans. Precisely for the conversation that we're having here now. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to argue and debate with your happy ass. I didn't say, I didn't say it like that to him. You know, we kept it cool. I'm not going to argue and debate with you. The best thing to do is separate. And you can do whatever the hell you want. I'm not going to be around to see it. So, if I separate, if we separate, I can't blame the white man no more. See, that's another reason why a lot of these folks, they really, they don't really want to separate. They don't even want to talk about separation. Even the ones even the ones that talk all that, basically, uh, they call them, uh, what they call them, black integrationists, whatever the hell they are. Black integrationists, whatever they want to call them, they, they, they are. The main reason why you really don't want to separate, because you want to blame the white man. You want to continue to blame the white man. See, if you separate, put yourself in a situation and you have to, to depend on yourself, there's no white folks, there's no Caucasian people around. So if you fail, you can't say, well, the, well, the, the Caucasian people done this to us and, and, and the, the redlining and the gentrification and, and all this other stuff. No, you failing because clearly you don't know what the hell you're doing. And Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump will add your black nation to all the all the shitholes in Africa. <laughs> you can't blame nobody except yourself. <laughs> That's why you don't want to separate, because you're on your own. You know, a lot of us. We don't want to leave our mama and daddy house. We want to depend on mama and daddy. And, and, and because we're not making it, you want to blame mama and daddy because you can't make it. Because if you go on your own, you can't blame mama no more. You can't blame daddy no more. You have a lot of us that's 20, 30, 40, 50, some years old, still depending. And some of them, and some of y'all got jobs. Some of y'all got jobs, still living with your mommy and daddy. Not quite honestly, let me tell you, to be truthful, there's nothing wrong with that. That's family. That's family. But don't blame your mama and your daddy for your problems. They don't have nothing to do with that. You're on your own now. You're, not, you're an adult. We are free people. If you're a free people, you have the right to strike out on your own and go get your own and be independent and do your own self. Make your own laws. Create your own culture. You have the right to do that since you claim to be free. But clearly, you must not be as free as you claim. Because a, a man, a man does not want to live in the house with another man. 
That's why when you see chickens, male chickens can't stand another male chicken being around. This my house. You got to go. One of us got to go. The white man cannot have a black woman. One of us got to go. So you should be kicking this Caucasian man out of your hen house with your woman. But you laying up with his woman, he's laying up with your woman, it's all messed up. But he doing it in his house. You are in his house. Depending upon another man. You, every black man, so-called black man, every soul brother in this country should feel some kind of shame living in another man's house. I asked this Caucasian gentleman, I asked him, how many laws, how many laws do you obey that black people created? He said, I, I, I don't know. None, sir. None. Not one. You don't obey not one law that black people created by ourselves. Not one. Not one. He's going to give me this long story about his people, immigrants, how they, how they, uh, you know, how they was poor. They, you know, the same old story. They talk all the time. They work real hard and, and finally they made it and blah, blah, blah. I asked him, I said, was your people slave for 400 years? No. Was your people turned into something they were not? You Irish and you stayed that way. Here you are, sir, talking to a, a, a so-called black man that speak English. Do you know what I am? I am a chocolate covered European. That's what I am. Your forefathers was not turned into something they were not. My people, we are, we have been turned into something we never was meant to be. For hundreds of years. I asked him. I said, was your people, was there any laws? Was there any policy created to keep them from being successful? No. We had Jim Crow. We had the, we had the black codes. We had slavery itself. You didn't have to fight. Your people didn't have to fight for civil rights or human rights or nothing. Only thing they had to do was work hard. Black folks work hard. It don't make no difference. All those people that was lynched, I guarantee you, a lot of them worked hard. So what? Your people didn't have to go through that. And you want me as their child, as their descendant, to talk to to sit here and tell you, oh, we're going to forget about the past. That's the past. I don't think so. And I told him, there were physical slaves in 1930. Still alive, sir. The last child of a physical slave, sir, died in 2002, to my knowledge. Slavery was not long ago. No. There is no reasoning with you. You don't have the right. The only way we can all start from scratch like you talking about is you got to heal and make right what you done to begin with. You got to heal that. If you don't heal that, it will never be it'll never be right. That's right, Syrian. You got to make what you've done, the hurt that you've done, you got to make that right. And see, me personally, I know that you don't want to make it right. You want to make all these excuses and try to justify. And just like he said, forget all that. How can you tell me? That's just like saying my, my mama just got murdered and you want me to just, oh, let's just, let's just forget about that your mama just got murdered. 
Let's, let's just move on. That shows how heartless these people are. They're heartless. They don't have no compassion. They only look it out for their best interest, and these are the good ones. You want to know something quite honestly? I would rather deal with the bad ones. Because at least with the bad ones, we know exactly where we're coming from. It's the good ones that you got to look out for. They the ones. They are the ones. We always calling the racist white people. They supposed to be the bad guys. Actually, they the good guys. You can actually work with them. You can be open, upfront, and we can solve this problem with the bad ones. The reason why you can't get nothing going is with these good ones, the so-called good ones. Trying to be goody two-shoes, politically correct, and all this other stuff. But when they, but if you listen to them, as they open up their mouth, you see this ain't going nowhere. So I told him, I told him, I'm not going to go back and forth with you, sir. Because I, I understand your, your mindset. That's why we need to su su uh, separate. Then he want to change that, this, his tone. Why you want to change your tone? He's worried about well, where you, where you going to go. What you worried about it for? As long as we gone, who cares? Where you gonna go? How you gonna, what you gonna do? They worried about that. See, that's that's how it is with abusers. When you sick and tired of somebody and, and they've been abusing you and exploiting you, then you tell them, I'm getting ready to go. All of a sudden, they wanna be nice. All of a sudden, they wanna be kind. Hey, 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 what's up there? Um. Yeah, they want to be nice and, and, and calm. And then they want they got all these questions. They got all these questions because one reason why they ask you these questions is because they really want to stop you. Because they really enjoy that you suffering. They enjoy the exploitation. They enjoy, there are some people that like to see people cry. There are some people that get enjoyment to see people in misery. So he's worried, well, where you gonna go? What you gonna do? How you gonna take care of yourself? It's not, not your damn business. What you care? I'm gone. We gone. So I told him really a little bit about the Mississippi campaign. And I'm, I'm talking to this good Caucasian guy. And you wanna know something? He think it could work. He don't like it because of his his mindset. Because we all Americans. But it could work. Your enemy is not going to tell you something that is good for you. If you ever get in trouble with the law, do not talk to the prosecutor. Do not talk to the police. The police and the prosecutor, they work hand in hand to put you in jail. There are people who actually listen to the prosecutor and the police. And you end up going to jail for a long, long time. Keep your mouth shut and listen to your lawyer. And of course, some of these lawyers is pathetic, but you know, you talk to your lawyer. You do not talk to, you do not take the advice of your enemies. Do not take the advice of your, your enemies. Why would you, why would you get upset about people that don't want to be around you anyway? You should be happy. Go, bye, see you later. But see the way 
that the Mississippi campaign has been put together is organized. It's organized and by the time an exodus begins, now mind you, mind you, this does not mean that we're gonna leave every all this all this what we built in, in this country to these Pecklewoods and these and these other riffraff. It don't mean that. And that's another thing. Just because you separate, don't mean you separating all the way. You gonna keep your whatever we got here. You gonna keep it. But you need to separate our future generations. You need to be, we need to begin to get our children the hell out of here. You and all of, uh, many of us, we damaged goods. We live and we die in hell. But these babies shouldn't have to do that. So the Mississippi campaign, if it becomes necessary, creates and will be creating an avenue to get them the hell out of here so they can be safe. We, we as adults don't have to go nowhere. We damaged goods. We've been tainted by the skunk. We need to get our children out of here. And those with right minds, get them the hell out of here so they can build and represent us in the best manner somewhere else. I do not... Uh, you do not get over the past. What is that old saying? You uh, you move on, but you never forget. You never forget. Especially when somebody has caused you harm and they've done nothing to heal the wound. You do, I don't forget. Do you think that I have forgot what these Picklewoods did to me for 10 years for no damn reason? You think I forgot? Do you believe if I was if I was put in a position to pay them back for what they done to me for 10 years, you think that it's not gonna be no payback? You got me wrong. I don't turn the other cheek. If you wanna turn the other cheek, then you need to find somewhere else to go. I don't turn the other cheek. Our babies need to, to know the hell that their ancestors suffered for 400 years in this country. The lynchings, the rape, the murder, torn feather, the humiliation, the degradation. I was born, I was born during Jim Crow. And what many of you don't know even after the civil rights bill and all that stuff, affirmative action, a lot of this stuff was still going on in the 1970s. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say it again. A lot of this stuff was still going on in the 1970s. Don't tell me it wasn't. I was living it. The civil rights bill and affirmative action don't mean, didn't mean nothing. When it's all said and done. It was still going on. I remember as a child. They told me. Don't go to the white neighborhood after dark. Because. If you wanted to do your shopping. At some of the major stores. You had to go to the white neighborhood. Caucasian neighborhood. But there was a there was an unwritten law, and I just learned this. There was an unwritten law called the sun, sundown law. No Negroes allowed after the sun goes down. That was still going on when I was a child. 1973, 1974. Civil Rights Bill, 1964. Ten years later or whatever. The, the, the past you talking about we need to forget wasn't that 
that long ago. What do you mean forget the past? It's still here. Our people getting shot down in the street. We still discriminated for jobs and housing and whatever else. It's still going on. What you talking? The past. It's still here. Forget the past. It never left. It's still here. Black folks all over this country committing suicide. They, they hung themselves for some reason. Lynched. All of a sudden, we want to we want to start committing suicide, right? Yeah. By lynching, we lynch, we 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 hanging ourselves, right? Okay. All right. If you say so, forget the past. I'm not letting these suckers off the hook. Now, if you want to let them off the hook, that's your business. I'm not letting these suckers off the hook. Hey, you, how you doing that, Janet? What's up? I'm not letting them off the hook. That's what they want. Now, they, they've enjoyed, just like this, this Caucasian guy, yeah, his family work hard. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, now his family work hard. That's that's true. But there was nobody against them. Very little. There was no there was nothing. There was no laws and nothing against them. He just wanted to ignore that. There was no slavery. There was no Jim Crow. There was nothing his family had to deal with. Syrian says vengeance belongs to God. I don't acknowledge God. So, so uh, if God want to do that, that's his business. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm standing up for my ancestors who could not stand up. I'm not going to forget their hurt and their pain, their suffering, which I've done a lot myself. They murdered 10 years of my life. I'm not gonna forget that. Are you crazy? Are you insane? I will be respectful to you. I will be nice to you, but don't try to chop me out. Don't think, don't think I'm a damn fool. I don't love you like that. You be just with me. Hey, what's up there, Universal? You be just with me, I will be just with you. But don't think I'm a damn fool. And see, that's what a lot of these folks want us to be. They want us to be damn fools. Forget, forget all the advantages and privileges they've had. We have not had those things. Give me what you had, and then we can talk. You're right, right. That's right, Janet. Playing us like fools. Give me what you had a chance to get. Then we can talk. This, these Caucasian people want us to forget that our ancestors actually made this country an economic world power. Oh, just forget that. They want us to forget that when they finally did physically, physically free the slaves, that they did not give the slave reparation, but they actually gave reparations to the slave owners. Are you serious? Are you... Come on, no, really, no. They think, <laughs> woo! And you have a lot of Negroes who actually, <laughs> you have a lot of Negroes who actually embrace what this car 
Caucasian guy is saying. And that's good. Let them do that. But I'm not going to do that. Because they don't have no love for their ancestors. They don't have no feelings. I do. I can feel that whip on my back. I can feel that noose around my neck. I can feel that fire burning my flesh. Being tarred and feathered. I can feel. A lot of these niggas, they don't feel nothing except their own pockets. They don't have no compassion for nothing. But they love that slave master and their children. I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, if you want to be just with me, Mr. Good White Guy, that's cool. If you want to do the right thing, that's cool. But don't try to play me for a fool. It's not happening here. That's why I say the best thing we could do is separate. Let these other niggas who love their slave master, they can stay and play with them and keep getting shot in the street and their sons and daughters getting lynched. Oh, it's a suicide. Let them keep doing, dealing with that foolishness. Let them keep dealing with it. You should not want to continue to do that. I'm not into that. I feel the pain. I don't have to go back to Kemet. I don't have to go back to ancient Ethiopia. I have love for those of whom I know. Some of them are still alive right now to this day. For many of you, I am a living ancestor and you will call me a nigga and call me out of my damn name, but then you'll turn around and talk about some suckers in Kemet that lived 5,000 years ago, my ancestors. Here I am, a living ancestor, and you disrespect me and, and call me all, all on my name and have no respect. Y'all a bunch of hypocrites. You have living, you have brothers and sisters who are alive, your ancestors right now, and you don't give a damn about them. They land up in nursing homes. Some of them barely have something to eat. Some of them, some of them don't have a home. Talk about my the ancestors. I thank the ancestors. I love my ancestors. You keep talking about the, the dead. What about the living? What about the brothers and sisters that fought for civil rights? That's a lie. They are alive. There's brothers and sisters in prison right now. You don't write a letter to. They was Nation of Islam. They was the Black Panthers. They was the SCLC and, and whatever. The ancestors laying up in prisons right now. You don't want to talk about them. Don't bring their names up or nothing. Oh, the ancestors this and the ancestors that. Really. See y'all, they so fake. You, you, you so fake. Really, I'm not that old. But for many of you, I would be a, a living ancestor. And you would praise and foam at the mouth talking about Kemet. Or whoever, some 5,000, 2,000. Here you are, you got your ancestor right now alive in your face. Alive in your face. It's a brother on here. Uh, brother Rashawn Delay. And I'm pretty sure he knows he he's missing some teeth or whatever. They talk bad about him because because maybe uh they they disagree with some of the things he say or whatever. He's an ancestor. He's my elder. He's your ancestor. And look how you treat these people, and they are alive. But you got respect for somebody you don't know 5,000 years ago. Really? So you ain't going to play that. You ain't going to bring that here. I'm not going to let you get away with it. No. No. I'm not going to let you get away with it. And so, this Caucasian guy, wanna, 
he's really curious. And they really get curious, really, when you talk about, they want to know all the details. How you going to separate? Where you going to go? How you going to feed yourself? What money you going to use? They get real, they want to know. Because they don't want you to be successful. Because when you're successful, other black folks are going to say, hey, I want to get out of here too. We are the ones that make America go round in this country. We are the ones that give America life. We are the ones that give America swag all over the earth. Our singing, our dancing, just who we are. These, these are, without soul brothers and sisters in this country, they'd be some boring suckers, and they know it. They boring. The only thing they think about is money, lying and stealing. We are the ones that give this country life. That's why they worry. But they hate your guts at the same time. Well, baby, you can't have it both ways. Treat, treat us right, give us justice, and we might stay a while. Thank you so much for telling them that. Hit that like button. See, I don't, I don't ask nothing from, I don't never even ask nothing from, uh, from you, uh, brothers and sisters. I never asked you to su su uh, subscribe. I don't never ask you to hit the like button or nothing. My only, the only thing I want for us is to be liberated from these bastards once and for all. That's right. That's right, Sister Janet. That's right. They want you in a slave condition. They want you in a slave like, I mean, make America great again. America was great when they had slaves and that's where that's the position they want you to be buck dancing buck dancing and singing and whatever for them i'm not into that i'm a free man i want my own and let me tell you something even even if if, if tomorrow even if tomorrow everything in america for soul brothers and sisters was great as a man I still want my own. Nice America. You know, we've been here. We solved the problem. We, we got, I mean, it's, it's nice. But I'm a man. I want my own. I still want us to leave. As men, you should want your own. My own house. As a man, regardless. You still should want to leave. As a man. The problem is you're not a man. You're a boy. And a damn slave. Dependent upon your slave master. Any man don't want to live. And another man is controlling you. Telling you what to do and blah blah. I don't want to live like that. Gots to go. Gots to roll out. But for a slave. And for some of y'all lazy. Lazy good for nothing. I mean this is alright. You don't want. You. You don't want to be your, uh, you don't want to leave your best friend, Scott. <laughs> you don't want to leave your best friend, Scott. I don't have a, I don't have a white best friend, Scott. And even if I did, Scott, my best friend, my white best friend, Scott, will be helping me leave. Because my best friend, Scott, know I got to be a man. You understand? <laughs> Brad and Becky. Yeah. You don't want to leave Brad and Becky. Now, if I had a friend, Brad and Becky, they would be helping me. They said, Talik, I understand how you feel. You got to be a man. What can, what can we do to help you move? And you know me, me and Brad and Becky, we still would be cool. But I got, we got to go. Just like they did. Just like they done. They went to war with their mama country. Because they men. This is mine. And you're not going to take what's mine. I'll kill you first. And they went to war. 
Not only did America go to war with their mama country once, they had to go to war with their mother country twice. That's what men do. You niggas happy with the scraps coming from another man's table. And then you wonder why we look bad in the eyes of our women. That's right, Sister Janet. There is, there is no love here. You'll never get no justice here. Do what we gotta do, and while we're doing it, you planning your escape. You planning your exodus. If not for you, you doing it so your children can get the hell out of here. Because chances are, we can't do it. We're not gonna be able to do it. But you can set things in motion to get our future generations the hell out of here and put them in the right state of mind so when they do get out of here, they can make it. But you can't make it in another place having a Negro mind. So, this is the... Uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is just uh, something I want to share with you. Talking with the you know good white people, <laughs> and and this is the thing about it. Actually, while I was talking to this gentleman, I asked him, did he want to did he want to come on come on live with me? At first, he said yes. Then all of a sudden, he he changed his mind. And he was looking at my phone. Are, are you recording this? He was worried about, about being recorded. I said, no, it's not. Now, if you are, if you stand on what you stand on, what you worried about anything for? Talk. What you scared of? That what kills me about these folks. I stand on mine. I'm, I'm, I stand on mine. I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. I'm not hurting you. I'm not causing you any harm at all. I'm a victim. I don't want to cause nobody any, any harm. But don't come in my face bringing me all this goody two-shoe crap talking about we need to forget the past. That goes to show me when you tell me to forget the past, that tells me where you coming from right there from the jump. Because if that happened to your people, I know damn well you wouldn't be saying that. A lot of these hypocrites, these some hypocrite folks. But uh, I ran my mouth long enough. I really enjoyed y'all company. Thank you, Janet, Syrian, Universal. Uh, some of those I forgot. You know, I'm... On this telephone, I really can't see a lot of the comments like I would if I was on my computer. So I missed a lot of the comments. But uh, I, I really appreciate everybody being here and uh, keeping me company. And uh... <laughs> hey, Universal, Universal more. I, I always make you want to go live, don't? <laughs> Why don't you go live? I join you over there, okay? I don't have nothing else to do tonight <laughs> except go to sleep. <laughs> so, so uh, um, that's right, Syrian. Um, yeah, we're, we're stuck. Yeah, that's right. We're stuck in the 1960s. Look how these people think. They think like we still, like Malcolm X is still here, Martin Luther King and the Black Panthers. They stuck in the 1960s. Wake up. Wake up. This 2019, y'all. And I'm going to say this and bring this to conclusion real quick. Now, this is something that the, that the Caucasian guy, this Caucasian gentleman, this is something that we really did agree upon. And he said in 2019, this is the time for new strategy and new ideas. 
and stop living in the past. He said the stuff don't work. Stop trying to make something that don't work, work. Him and I, we 1,000% agreed upon that statement. I agree with him. Just like Syria said, we are stuck in the 1960s. 2019, 2019 and the 1960s, there are similarities, but we're not the same. And clearly, whatever it was in the 1960s did not solve the problem. So whatever they was doing did not work. It didn't solve the problem. You and I want to solve the problem once and for all. Ain't you, aren't you tired of this? Living this way? Me personally? If we're going to continue to live like this, really I'd rather be dead. Because this don't make any sense. I probably, I'm probably a dead man anyway. Probably a dead man anyway. It was senseless. It was senseless how Nipsey Hussle was murdered. Senseless. And you actually want to continue to live this kind of life? What's up there, Scott? We want to continue to live this kind of lifestyle? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? You mean to tell me? You mean to tell me that you don't want to concentrate on what we can agree upon so we can get the hell out of hell? You want to concentrate on, I don't like Angel Snub Nub 7. He, he, he said this and he said that and, and, and he called me, he, he called me this and, and who cares? Who cares? I don't give a damn about what nobody called me. If you're serious about solving this problem, let's do it. I don't trip off a of name calling and all this other immature fantasy stuff. Get serious about solving the problem once and for all. I don't care what you said about me 10 minutes ago. I don't care you called me a Sambo and a Coon and all these other. Who gives a damn? Are you serious about solving this problem once and for all? That's all I care about. Those things don't bother me. I, can, I get over those things fast. But what I don't get over fast is I have to worry about when I'm driving my car and a cracker cop pull behind me because I don't know how this is going to turn out. You should be sick of living this kind of lifestyle. You Y'all tripping. You really tripping. That's why more and more people getting sick and tired of all that blackity black, Kemet, Hebrew is like more, all that stuff. They're getting sick of it. And for some reason, they see a reality's temple video and they they press it. And next thing you know, I got a new subscriber. When it's all said and done, you're gonna have to deal with me. Cause folks getting tired of all this kumbaya feel good garbage it's not taking us nowhere you know it's not taking us nowhere and I know it and you can get angry at me all that you want to it's time for us to be free for real liberated be a man and a woman for real I'm serious as a heart attack I'm not playing no game you're not serious really stay the hell away from me uh oh. Battery power getting low. I got to get out of here anyway. I'll check us out on the flip. Thank you again for joining me. I'm going to put this on charge. If you go live, Universal More, I'm still going to be able to hear you. So, with that said, thank y'all for joining me. I enjoyed our little talk. And until next time, as Dr. Cornelius always told us, I wish us love, peace, and soon. I'm out, y'all. Thank you.